Hello there, all my creator friends. Happy Saturday. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Saturday. Um, hello, all my creator friends out there. I'm hoping, um, hoping you get to join us today, but if not, let's go over a couple things. If you see that red light box, that means we're live. If not, no worries. If you're catching the, re the replay, just hit hashtag replay. I want to be able to say hello to you and thanks for watching. Um, my name is Christy. I'm the owner of Uncommon Necessities. We're located here in the Town Square Mall in Port Orchard, Washington. 1700 Southeast Mile Hill Drive. Our shop hours are Thursday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. So hopefully you get the chance to stop by and say hello. We have all sorts of goodies here. Um, Iron Orchid Design Products, Dixie Bell Chalk Paint and Products, plus things we've created and also other small businesses that you can find. So hello everyone, welcome, welcome. I think I have something good in store for us today. Um, we're gonna try something new, so that should be fun. Also, we have a project that we need to finish up from last Saturday. So we'll get that going and get that finished up. Um, and then I'm pretty excited about trying something new. So I can't wait to do that. So I hope everybody's having a good Saturday. It's so beautiful outside. So take advantage, and that's probably where you might be already. So take advantage of the two days of heat we have because um, it's not looking good for next week. It's looking like a good craft week. It'll be gloomy, rainy, and, and cloudy. So it'll be a good time to be indoors and crafting for sure and creating. So... Um, a lot of things happening down here. Right now we have a um, Port Orchard book author, authors signing going on at the bookshop um, located next to us. And so that's a lot of fun. There's probably about 10 different um, authors that are located here in Port Orchard doing book signings. So that's fun and good. So if you have a chance to stop by today, come check them out. Hello, Greg. Welcome, welcome. Also, next, yeah, next Saturday and Sunday, so the 6th and 7th, we have the Seroptimus Spring Days Craft Fair here. Um, so there'll be lots of vendors here Saturday and Sunday, all in the main mall area, um, showing off their goods and selling those. So um, come on down, check that out as well. We'll be open during that time. And then on May 15th, we have our night market here in the mall. And that's from 8 p.m. until midnight, and it's going to be a fun one. There's lots of stand-up comedians that will be here. I think there's like five stand-up comedians, four or five, um, that will be here during that time. So there'll be music and stand-up comedians as well. And we'll be open that day on May 15th from 10 a.m. <coughs> until midnight. So stop on by for that. I hope everybody's having a great Saturday. I know we're having fun around the shop. So come on in. So just to get us um, kind of going, um, I will start working on finishing our last weekend's project. Um, if you all remember, we were working on this beautiful little cutting board. I had gotten the board at the Target $5 spot, and then we painted it with Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color cotton. We have some decoupage papers from Decoupage Queen. We did a little stenciling, Iron Orchid Design molds, and um, Iron Orchid Design air dry clay. Now that the clay is dry, we can go ahead and add the wax to it. So there we're at right now. Isn't that beautiful? So we'll get that going, but let me share with you what we're going to do today. So I thought it'd be kind of neat to try paint inlays on slate coasters. So I ordered these slate coasters from Amazon and they came in a package of six and we are going to put the rose chintz um, paint inlay 
which is this one here, on these coasters, we're going to use um, clear coat and flat to inlay our paint inlay on the coaster. Once that's all dry, um, then we will seal it with some gator hide from Dixie Bell. Hi, Miss Melissa. Welcome, welcome. Glad you could join us today. I've got something new for us to try. So pretty excited about that. So we're going to use six slate coasters, paint inlay in the rose chintz. And then um, we're going to use the Dixie Bell flat top coat. And um, next Saturday, we'll come back and we'll seal them with gator hide. And that'll give them a nice water... Um, protected coat on them. Um, so for now, I hope you're having a good Saturday, Miss Melissa. Thank you for joining me today. It's always so much fun when I have friends on and all of that. So I always say the more, the merrier. So we're going to finish up this project. So let me turn the camera down and we'll get this one waxed up and distressed a little bit and my assistant's going to help us because the last time i tried to do this by myself um y'all fell on the table sorry all right turn it just a little bit perfect um there that looks good all right hopefully you can see let me get the mouse out of the way all right i'm gonna take a drink a soda. Okay. So <clears throat> the first thing I want to do is um, I want to distress the edges a little bit. So we're going to give it a little bit of a worn look. So I'm just taking some coarse ground, coarse ground, coarse sandpaper. And we're just going to kind of give this edge a little bit of a roughed up look to it. Not too much. Just a little bit where it's been worn maybe. And where we can see some of that wood coming back from it. Now, you don't have to do this step. It's completely up to you and your taste. And if this is something you like, and I'm sorry, I'm shaking the camera around. So let me hold that up a little bit. It's the only thing bad about the camera being attached to the table is that as we're doing things, Sometimes it shakes it. So let me show you where we're at so far. So you see how the wood's kind of peeking back out in it again. And so we're just going to do a little bit of that around the edge. Just to kind of pull that back out again. So it doesn't look quite so new. But like I said, you can certainly um, totally skip this step if you like the really clean, fresh look and it'll still be amazing. And if you take too much off, you can always go back over it with your chalk paint and just fix wherever you took off. So I took a little bit of that silver or the gray off and to me that looks pretty good. Let me distress that a little bit over to this side. And so I'm just kind of giving it a little sand. There. Okay. And let's get this top edge a little bit. I hope you're having a great Saturday. I had a lot of fun. I got to go to a conference with the Iron Orchid Design team and learned a lot of good things. Um, so that was a lot of fun and glad to be home. Okay. 
There we go. Get the dust off my surface here. Okay, let me show you what we've got. So now we've got kind of the edge, as you can see up there, distressed a little bit. The bottom is a little distressed. And you want to do this step, if possible, before you put your, your sealer down. So we're going to wax. And so before I waxed, I wanted to make sure I did that distressing first. So now, always when you're going to put a dark wax on, you always want to make sure you put a clear, a clear coat down first. So this is the clear wax, best stain wax from Dixie Bell. So we'll use that first. And then we're going to use a little bit of the grunge gray best stain wax from Dixie Bell to kind of get into those grooves and really highlight those areas. And let me make sure I've wiped my piece off of all the sand or all the dust from doing that. So the reason you want to do the clear is it helps you control um, your dark wax. Because if you put just dark wax down, it actually gets sucked right into your wood or whatever you're working on and makes it really difficult to wipe it back. So we're just going to start by putting clear wax over the entire thing. And this will protect our piece and seal it. Um, so we don't have to put another top coat on top of it. And then you can wipe this back and buff it out once you get it on. So we're just going to Put that right on here. Now you're going to want to make sure you get all the edges sealed good so your piece is nice and protected. So we're just going to go around, seal all these edges up. And we'll do the back real quick. That way it's all done and sealed. It's so beautiful outside. I hope this is not our only um, two days of summer. Yikes. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> Had so much fun this last week going and learning some new things um, and bringing that all to you. So we'll be doing some different things off and on in our Saturdays together. Um, so I look forward to doing all that. Okay, now let's make sure we get our clay pieces really good and waxed. Just give them now, what you do need to be careful is when you're doing your clay pieces, make sure you don't put so much wax on that you've now filled in all that, all those recesses and that lovely part of your molds. Now you'll notice my mold down here at the bottom, air dry clay does tend to crack and you'll see there's a crack here. Now it lends itself to being, um, to giving it more of that vintage authentic look. Um, but if you don't like the crack, after it's dried, you can certainly take a little bit more clay and just fill it right in and let that air dry and that'll fix it. But I leave my cracks because I tend to like the way they look. They kind of give the piece a little bit more of an authentic feeling of being vintage. But you can certainly fill those in. All right, so we've got our piece good and waxed with the clear wax. I'm just going to take a clear, a clean um, rag and I'm just going to kind of wipe it back a little bit on the surface so I make sure my decoupage paper doesn't have any clumps, things like that on it. And then that way we've got a nice waxed piece. Okay. All right. 
so it does dry clear so if you're wondering why my wax is white it allows you to be able to see where you've placed the wax but this wax does dry clear so there you go okay so now we're going to take i'm sorry about the if you can hear the banging but now we're going to take a little bit of this grunge gray and we're going to kind of you can either brush it on or you can use um, a little stiffer brush i'm going to try and brush it on first see how that works and all i do to brush it on is i just take a paintbrush and i just dab in my wax and i kind of just make sure i get it down in those grooves this is why you don't want to do this when it's um, wet because you really while your clay is still wet because you really got to get into those um, grooves and so then we'll wipe this back and if you've gotten too much dark um, wax on there and you still can't get back as much as you would like you can always take the clear wax and it acts like an eraser and it can help remove even more of the dark wax if you want it removed so i love this grunge gray because if i don't have a piece that's um really calling for the black wax this gray gives you just enough of that kind of vintage look um and it's not quite so stark as the as the black now we do have different colors hi miss linda welcome welcome Happy Saturday. Thank you for joining us today. We're finishing up right now a project from last weekend. Um, and so we've totally waxed the piece in clear wax. That gives us control over the dark wax. And now I'm just taking the dark wax and going over my molds. Now, you can certainly go over your entire piece with the dark wax and then wipe it back. It really is kind of whatever your taste is, that's what's great about this wax. You can make it fit for you. Okay, so let's take our cloth again. Let me just cut a small section off of this one. And then we're going to wipe back that wax and see what we get. Hi, Miss Kay. Howdy, howdy. Thanks for jumping on, friend. It's always great to see you guys every Saturday. I look to, look forward to our Saturdays together. So much fun. So much fun. All right. Let me take it and wipe this wax back. And just need a soft cloth. You can even use baby wipes if you want a more, um, if you want to remove even more off. It really is up to you. So you can, you can really, but if I had not put that clear wax down to begin, um, it would stay more of this darker color and be much harder for me to get off. So it's really key that um, to have that clear wax down first um, to be able to control the amount of dark wax you have left on your piece. Thank you everyone for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. I love, I love crafting together on Saturdays. It's always a good time, good time. Let me get a little bit more off there. So now I'm just kind of doing a buffing, kind of a buffing to get even more of that off. And then you'll see how it just sits in those recesses. See how it sits in the recesses of the mold? Let me get it up close to you. Isn't that beautiful? So it just sits there. 
Now you can add, like I said, some of that dark wax kind of all over your piece if you want. I'm just going to take what's on my little towel and just kind of rub it all over um, <clears throat> this little bit of wax that's on here. Um, and it'll give it a little bit of a tinge of kind of a darker, a darker color. There we go. There we go. So now we have it kind of grunged up. We have the waxes on. We've done some distressing on the sides and on the bottom. Now, probably what I'll do, and I forgot to bring it with me, is it might be kind of neat with the sari silk um, on it. But I think I'm going to put just a piece of twine on there for now um, for the handle. You could also wrap twine around the handle. I mean, there's so many options that you can do. And this is just regular old twine, nothing spectacular. So I just fold it in half and tied it in a knot. And then I'm just gonna loop it through the back here. I think that's the way I want, or no, I wanna go this way, I think. I really want the knot to be in the back. Let's see if this is the right direction that I want to go. No. This way. Okay. So I've looped it through and I'm just going to stick my knot through. Actually the knot's going to be at the top. And there you go. That's all you have to do to put something to hang it with um, at the top. Not easy. What do you guys think? Hi, Lee. Everyone, this is a friend of mine I met at the IOD conference, Miss Lee. So welcome our new friend. Hello, Miss Lee. So this is our little cutting board from the dollar or from the Target $5 spot. So welcome, welcome. Thanks, guys. All right, so let's get on to trying something new. Isn't that cute? That'd be cute hanging on the wall. Um, so we're going to try something new today. We're going to see how it goes, friends. Okay, so I got these six coasters. They're slate coasters from Amazon. And we are going to attempt to put the rose chintz inlay on top of these coasters. And we're going to use clear coat to put the um, paint inlay down on the um, slate. And then next weekend, we're going to seal them with gator hide from Dixie Bell, which will give them kind of that water protectant. We're going to see how this goes. No, I'm good. Thank you. We're going to see how this goes. So I love trying new things with you guys. If it's a big fail, then you'll know not to do it, right? <laughs> All right. <sighs> so first thing I want to do is get my rose chintz inlay out and kind of cut the inlay to size. Whoops. You guys never throw away your inlay sheets that you've used. So these are all sheets that I've used at least once. And as you can see, you can get two to three uses out of these sheets. Look how vibrant they still are after one use. I mean, and so if you don't know what paint inlay is, a paint inlay is paint on paper. So this is all painted on the paper. So what you see is paint on paper, and we're going to inlay it into wet paint. Then this image will stay, fingers crossed, where we've inlaid it. So, all right, you guys ready to try this? I don't know, I'm a little nervous, but we're all friends here, right? Okay. Let's give this a shot. 
Okay, let me get a piece out. So they come, this particular inlay has eight sheets. And look how much you get on a sheet. I mean, and aren't these just gorgeous? Look at the detail in these flowers. Aren't these beautiful? So I thought they'd be really pretty on these slate coasters. So we're going to try that. Okay, so let me measure out what we're going to cut and decide. So I'm going to, I am going to just take a pin and you know, let me turn the paper over. Actually, that would be better. So paint is on the bright side, the back of the paper is where it's dull. I'm just going to put my coaster over what I think I'm going to cut for the pieces, just so I have somewhere I know where I'm going to cut. And we'll just line out a few pieces here. I think these are going to be so cool if it works out like I think it's going to work out. Hi, Sean. That's my brother. Hello, brother. Welcome, welcome. So we are going to... Oh, we also um, just... As a reminder, we do have a Creator Corner page. And so if you're working on a project and would like to share with everyone, um, please feel free to go there and upload um, what you're working on or if you have questions and need help with something. It's just a place for all of us to share what we're working on. And it doesn't have to be related to this. It could be any kind of art project you're working on. Anything at all. And... There's some pretty magnificent things in there to look at. We have some very talented creator friends in our community, so it's a great way to share. I can do all six coasters, look at that, all six coasters with one page with a lot left over still. Watercolor on the creator page? Absolutely. Absolutely, we would love to see any watercolor. Kay has been testing her hands at um, watercolor and it's amazing. So yes, if that's what you're asking, please post those. That would be beautiful to see. I'm sure everyone would enjoy those. Okay, so let's cut these out real quick. And we don't have to be too terribly exact. I just wanna make sure that they were big enough and covered my coaster. That's all. But I hope everyone's having a great Saturday. It's finally sunny here, um, but it's going to turn cold. Cold again this week. Womp womp. I'm so glad you made it home safe, Miss Lee. Got to meet lots of new friends down at the conference. Be careful, your Okay, uh. were you asking me about the creator page? Is that what you were referring to, the watercolor? I just want to make sure. Make sure I got that. Almost done, friends. Don't forget, May 15th is our night market here at the Town Square Mall. And lots of great vendors. It's going to be comedy night. And so there's like four comedians that will be here. And so there'll be music and comedians, live comedians. Well, I guess that's better than the other ones, kind of comedians. Mm. So it's going to be lots of fun. So if you can join us, our shop will be open that Saturday from 10 a.m. until midnight. So it'll be great fun. Come down and check us out. 
Next Saturday and Sunday is the Seroptimus Vendor uh, Craft Fair, spring, uh, spring days. So there'll be lots of vendors out in the main part of the mall. So come on down and check out all those vendors and stop by and say hi to us. We would love to see you. And it'll be a lot of fun. Now, next Saturday, I thought a fun project for us to try, kind of staying on the coaster theme, is I wanted to try transfers on these coasters. So next Saturday, we will be trying transfers on the slate coasters. So we're going to see how it goes. Okay, so I've got all six of my... All six of my um, inlays there. So let me line these up. So also you'll notice on the back of these transfers or inlays is a grid mark. So if you need to line things up, it's really easy to do that um, using those grid marks. Okay. So let's start with, I'm going to use Dixie Bell clear coat and flat. And I'll tell you, Miss Kay, now that you're here today too, best tip I've ever gotten from anyone on these paint jars and how to keep your lids from sticking. The press and seal is a game changer, friends. Look how easy my paint lid comes off. Look at that. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Miss Kay, for that wonderful tip. It has been an absolute game changer. No more sticking lids. I only have to peel it back, which is kind of nice too, because then I can keep the rest of the jar covered. Great, great, great tip. See, that's the great thing about our community. We share and learn from each other. It's so awesome. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a layer of this top coat down, and I'm using flat just because I don't want to change really the look too much of this um, slate, but I'm putting a generous amount down. Doesn't have to be terribly thick, but you want a good, a good amount. And I do have a fan on, so I got to kind of work a little fast. So I want to make sure I have a good amount down. And then I'm going to take my paint and lay, right? And I'm going to lay it right down on top of that. And I'm going to kind of press it in to that layer of clear coat. So we're just pressing. We want all those air bubbles out. We don't want any air bubbles in it. Okay. Let's do another one. So it goes pretty quick. Now... Ideally, I would let this sit 24 hours um, just to let it dry on its own once we do the spritzing on it. Um, but for the sake of the video today, we're going to speed the process up a little bit and see what we get. Okay, good layer of top coat. Lay my paint and lay right into that. Just rub it down. I'm not sure how this is going to work, but we're going to find out together, friends. Hopefully it's not a big fail. Hopefully it comes out beautiful. Hi, Christine. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Kendra. That is my daughter. Hi, Miss Kendra. Thanks, everyone, for joining me today. We're trying something new out together. So we're going to see how, how fun this is. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it comes out like I think it will. So we're going to give this a good try. And then next Saturday, like I mentioned, we're going to try transfers on slate coasters and see how that goes. Because I think there's some transfers that I think would be beautiful on these slate coasters. Okay, got that one down. Is anybody else as nervous as I am if this is going to work? 
Or do you guys all think it's going to come out and look beautiful? I'm a little nervous. But I always like trying things out with you guys because, A, you're my friends. Um, so if it's a big fail, we all did it together. It's a big, you know, we're friends. Um, if it comes out good, yay. But if not, if it fails, then that way you guys know what not to do. See? how that works your stuff always comes out that's why you steal it oh you're so sweet thank you thank you all right let's see marble coasters oh there's an idea I don't know if we want to get that fancy yet <laughs> That might be pretty though. Wouldn't that be pretty on marble? This paint and lay. And if it worked on marble coasters, could you imagine? You could probably do it on a marble top. Ooh, that'd be fancy. Okay, last one. All right. Good layer down. Okay. All right. Ooh, there is mo marble coasters out there. Look at that. Cool. Okay. So let me cover my... Look how easy that was. I'm just amazed at how wonderful this has worked. This tip is like the best tip ever. Thank you, thank you, thank you again, Kay. Okay. All right, so let me make sure I don't have any air bubbles. And then it's pressed down real good. Like I said, you wanna make sure you have a good layer. This is also, we're gonna find out if I had a good enough layer down too of the um clear coat we'll see if, if that worked out so let me press that down real good all right so i just have a fine mister bottle i'm just going to come in and it's not going to work there we go and i'm just going to give it a good mist now what this does is it it releases the paint on the paper to inlay into our top coat. So you want to make sure you get it good and damp. Okay. So then it looks vibrant again, right? Then we're going to take a paper towel and we're going to dampen, dampen where it's at. And so you're kind of firmly pressing it down. Because you want to make sure you have good contact everywhere on your surface with your paint inlay. So you dampen it down. So I had a bubble there. And you can get the bubbles out by doing this too. So we want to make sure we get it all, all down there. And you want to just make sure you don't have water just rolling off either. So this helps kind of get that excess water up as well. And I'll show you what this looks like up close here in a second. And so you want to make sure you get any bubbles, air bubbles, because if there's an air bubble between you and your project or your project in the paper, then um, the paint won't transfer. That's why it's really key and important to do that. Okay. Okay, I think we're looking pretty good. So let me show you one of these up close. So you see how it's damp, but it's not dripping of water. So normally at this step, I would let these sit um, overnight for 24 hours. Let them dry naturally. Um, uh, <laughs> you guys are so funny. 
You're so funny. Um, I would let these dry naturally, but because A, I can't wait um, because I want to see if it works, and B, uh, we're in the video. We're going to speed this up with my little dryer, my handy dandy dryer. So, you'll know it's dry when it goes back to that paper look. So, when it looks like a piece of paper, um, it's dry. Because I know there's a few that have tried the inlays. Does anybody have any question about the inlays? They're really not as hard as it might think they are. I was a little afraid of them, of them at first just because I thought, oh gosh. It's a few steps more than I usually do. But I'll tell you, once you get used to doing the couple of steps, you're going to be like trying to find everything to inlay on. I know the dark slate. Oh my gosh, this inlay looks so good against anything that's dark. It's amazing. The, the colors in this inlay just pop. And... We'll see how good it looks. We'll see. Fingers crossed. But I was a little leery of trying them at first, but I'll tell you, once I got used to doing the couple steps, like I said, you're going to want to find anything and everything you can inlay on because it looks like hand-painted. It looks like you've hand-painted on your surface, which is so awesome. It's an easy way to create such beautiful things for inexpensive. And this was only one sheet, and I still have even part of that sheet left. And there's eight sheets that come in that packet. And you can reuse these two to three times. So I got probably at least another two uses that I can use these. And now each time you use it, it gets a little bit lighter. Uh, so it gets a little bit more vintagey looking, but I also, full confession, bought some wood coasters as well. So I'm going to be trying the paint and lay on the wood coasters um, as well. And I thought, what what a great gift this would be for someone, right? Um, wedding gift, housewarming gift, um, set of coasters. I think it would be just so cool, handmade by you. And yeah. So you want to make sure they're good and dry. That's why I... I say 24 hours to let them get good and dry naturally. So that's why I'm just making sure that these are really good and dry. Because if they're not, the paint won't stick into the top coat. Um, and I'll only get a partial design out of them. And I want to see it all. A gift for your daughter. Oh my gosh. That's so true. So true. She'll probably come in the shop in the next couple of days and say, where are those posters you did? I, I would really like to have those for my house. <laughs> and of course, you know, I say yes. Because she's amazing. Mother's Day, yes. Another good, good option. And slate is all the rage. <laughs> Nailed it. You guys are so funny. All right. I think they're pretty. Good and dry. Maybe this one needs a little bit more.
All right, they look pretty good to me. So let me hold this up again so you can see. You see how now it's turned back to paper again? Amazing. Now, all you do is spritz it again. Spritz, so it comes back wet again. Spritz. I know it seems silly, but this is the way we get our paper off. It's like, but you just dried it. I know. It's okay. And so we'll dampen it again so we don't have any running water because the paint that's on the paper is water-based. And so that's the other great thing about it. Um, and so if we get too much water, when we lift these and it runs into the, it has a chance of smearing what we just did. Okay, is everybody ready for the big reveal? Is everyone ready for the big reveal? Okay. Let's move these ones down and we'll start at the top. All right. This is almost like the most satisfying part of this whole process is peeling the paper back and seeing the picture or the image that's left. Okay. This is where we're going to see if it works. All right. It didn't stick fabulously, but it did stick some. But look how it even looks cool. Now, like I said, you'll get a much better image if you let it sit for 24 hours. But, I mean, even that looks... Doesn't that look cool? Get her done. It kind of gives it that vintage worn look. So I'm even happy with that. But if you let it sit for 24 hours, it'll definitely give you a much sharper image. Well, it's a proof and concept, so yeah. it does work. It's just a... Look at that! It's just fine-tuning... Look at that! ...how wet and how much top coat. It works, friends! It works! So we know it does stick on slate. I love it. It's it does work on the slate. Look here. Isn't this the best part, the reveal? Now, each of these sheets of paper, I will let sit and dry. I will let sit and dry and then we can reuse them again. So what we've learned is we definitely know that it sticks on slate, definitely works with the top coat, and I think I might do another set tonight and let them sit for 24 hours and see if by letting them sit naturally for 24 hours how those look. And then I'll show you those next Saturday, so we'll do them both. We'll have fun that way. Um, this paper is a little dry. Boy, they got dry quick. The hot from the gun. Oh, that's true. I didn't even think about that. It probably did get very hot from the heat gun, heat tool. Okay. Let me hold this one up. Aren't these cute? Look at this. This is so fun. These look like coasters that have been well loved and used over and over, don't they? How pretty are those? So I will save these pieces of paper, let them dry, and I will use them again for another project. Just remember that if you do use your paint inlay and use a different color, say like a blue, as your background to inlay into, that blue will transfer onto your paper. 
So that's really what I love about using top coat because it's clear. You don't have a different color, so you can use it with any project. That's what I love. Oh my gosh, friends. Oops. Isn't that pretty on that background of the slate? Look at that. So pretty. And I'm going to do another set with the rose chintz. And I'm going to leave it on 24 hours and um, see how it turns out. And then I will show you um, both sets next Saturday. But what we need to do now is we don't want it to, because you can reactivate these right now with water. So say you, you wanted to be able to touch up and move some paint around. You can get your brush wet with water and you can move your paint because this is all water-based paint. So you can move your paint around and fill in any spots you want. I like it this way. It looks more worn and, and vintage. So we're going to leave it just like that. And then I have a mixture of 50-50 top coat in the flat and water. And I'm going to try and spritz it on here. Although my spritzer is not a very good spritzer. It's kind of a sprayer. I'm not even sure that's going to work well. You need more of a mister bottle. And <clears throat> and that's not misting very well. So I'm going to see if I spray a little onto here. So I've, you really need more of a fine mister. And the only reason you don't want to too much brushing is because it will activate that paint and spray it or move it around. But this will seal it so we can put that Gatorade top coat, which is a really good water repellent top coat on top of these. And that way we won't have to worry about it um, coming off if somebody uses it and sets a drink on it. Like how cool is that? There we go. That's better. Now I've ordered some new um, Mr. Bottles, small glass Mr. Bottles um, from Amazon. And when I get those in, I will put the link of if they work as well as I think they will, I will put the link of the Mr. Bottles in this video so you can see that. Um, that have a nice fine mist on them. So stay tuned for that. Um, I did learn an important step about the small fine Mr. Uh, Mr. Bottles is every time you use it, you need to take it apart and clean this section with water and soap and then spray um, water through it again um, to keep it clean if you have top coat in it okay but this is going to allow us to seal that without doing a lot of um, rubbing on it to not so we don't smear our paint look at that friends isn't that awesome look how beautiful The applications that you can use these inlays for is nearly endless. I mean, we just did it on slate coasters. How awesome is that? All right. Then we'll let this dry up. And next weekend, we'll put the gator hide on it, and they'll be all ready to be used. All right, a little bit more. 
and we're done. Okay. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, so the top coat, this will dry flat, so it will look the same. Um, you, I mean, we have shiny, um, we have gloss, and we have a satin. So you can use whatever level of shine top coat you want. So if you really want these to shine, um, then the gloss would make it really shiny on top. So it's really up to you and what you like for shine. Um, I use the flat 50-50, but you can use 50% water and 50% satin and give you just a little bit of gloss. But thanks, everyone. Melissa, you're so sweet. Thank you very much. But the top coat, um, if you put a little bit of shine on it, would even pop even more. So you can see this one's already drying. So if you wanted to keep that more natural slate look, um, that matte finish, this matte top coat um, in our flat is really good. So you can see it's already half dry and there's no shine, so you can still keep that very natural um, slate look. Thanks, Miss Linda, you're so sweet. Well, gosh, friends, we did two projects. Well, we finished up one, and then we we tried something new, which I'm so excited about. Um, I will do that other set um, this week, and we'll compare and see um, what they look like. But we finished our little $5 Target cutting board. If you remember, we used Dixie Belle cotton white chalk paint on this. We used our Iron Orchid Design uh, molds. Um, we used decoupage queen decoupage paper. We did a little stenciling. Once this um, the clay pieces dried, we added the clear wax and then the, the gray wax and gave it a more vintage feel. Oh my gosh, friends. Well, I hope this was fun. It was very interesting to me. It was um, making me a little anxiety, a little nervous, but I think it came out great. So I hope everyone has a great rest of your Saturday. Thank you for joining me. I love our Saturdays together, all the fun we have creating and making new things and chit-chatting. It's so much fun. I love our community. I really appreciate everyone taking their time to join me and hang out with me. It's always more fun crafting with a lot of friends. So thank you. Thank you. If you'll do me a favor and like and follow and share my video out, that'll help get us even more friends um, to join us as well. Keep sharing those tips and tricks with us. Um, like I said, Kay gave me a great one. Awesome. Awesome. We can all learn from each other. So Thank you so much from that, for that tip. And um, I will see you guys all next Saturday. We're going to do a transfer on Slate and see how that works out. And then I'll have the second set of Slate with the paint inlay. Thank you, everyone, for joining me today. I appreciate it. And if you um, want something to do, stop by and say hi. Next Saturday and Sunday is the craft fair. Come in and check us out and say hello. Love to see you. Um, Joseph and Rilo say hey. I, oh, hello, Joseph and Rilo. Rilo is my newest grandson. He's four months old. Um, so thank you again, everyone. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Have a great week. Thanks, my friends. Bye, friends. <laughs>